Okay, class, this one we're gonna talk about the valves. So there are four valves in the, in the heart, right? We know already that there's um, two valves that separates the atrium, atria from the ventricles. So we have um, the tricuspid valve and the bicuspid valve or the microvalve. And then we also have valves that goes into the greater vessels, okay? So of these four valves, why are these valves so important? Okay, so we already learned the blood flow. Remember the one blood flowing through certain ways and all that things. Um, in the circulatory system, the blood has to flow in a certain direction. So how do you make sure that happens? Because the heart pumps at such a force. How do you make sure the blood flows in one direction? Well, the valves make sure you do that so that you can close in and open it in the appropriate time to allow for blood to flow in the correct direction. It is very important for us to learn that because when there is a defect, there's gonna be a very big compromise in heart function and blood flow to the correct places. Okay, so let's take a look at, quickly look at summarizing this figure. So when blood is coming in from the, coming into the right atrium from the body, Okay, so this is deoxygenated blood and the oxygenated blood coming from the lungs into the left atrium. So blood is flowing in actually at the same time, okay? And in order for blood to continue to flow down to the ventricles, you have to make sure the atrioventricular valves are open. So the tricuspid valve and the mitral valves are open to allow blood to flow into the ventricles and fill the ventricles. And the atria will contract to push the last remaining bit of blood to fill the ventricles. This is actually quite an important part to make sure that the blood is filling the ventricles um, before the ventricles pump. And we'll learn more about that with the EKG when this doesn't happen, it actually uh, compromises the cardiac output because if you don't fill the ventricles, you're not able to push the blood out. Okay, so first of all, most important is that as blood is flowing in, you wanna make sure those valves, the tricuspid and the mitral valves are open, you fill the ventricles. Once the ventricles are filled, what is the next step, right? So let's take a look at this. The next step is to send the blood from the ventricles out of the heart. So in order to do that, what you're gonna do is to make sure when the heart is contracting, so there's a lot of force coming from the heart. The heart is, a, fairly strong muscles, it's coming a pretty strong force. So when it pushes the blood, you wanna make sure the tricuspid valve and the mitral valve are fully closed because the blood cannot go backwards into the atria, okay? So the valve is closed to allow the blood to go in the right direction. So from the right atrium, it's gonna flow through the pulmonary trunk, the pulmonary artery into the lungs, and from the left, ventricle is gonna flow through the aorta into the whole body. In fact, in order to make sure the valve is closed, there's a couple of very important anatomical features. The valves here, you can see on this figure as well, the valves are attached to the ventricular myocardium via these little cords called the chordae tendinae, and those cords attach to the papillary muscle at the tips of the papillary muscle. So when the ventricles contract, the papillary muscle pulls on the cord of tendinae to pull the valves tight, like you pull on a parachute or you pull something really tight to make sure it's closed. So this closes the valve so that when the ventricle contract, blood cannot flow back up. It's actually quite amazing that this works so well given how strong the heart is, okay? So that's, that's the valve is closed. So where is the blood going now is to the greater vessels. So let's take a look, look at the next slide. So when the ventricles pump, the right ventricle is pushing blood off through the pulmonary trunk and the pulmonary artery away from the heart into the lungs, not back. See how it's not gonna go back, this is closed. It's gonna go through the semilunar valves, which is the pulmonary valve opens to allow that to happen. On the left side, the left ventricle is pumping, 
the valves are the the mitral valves hold tight, so the val uh, the blood is pushed through the aortic valve into the aorta and delivered to the rest of the body. So in this case, when I say the ventricles contract, the atrial ventricular valves are closed, but the semilunar valves are open. Okay. Now, when the ventricles relax, the semilunar valves are going to now be closed tight. So the pulmonary valve and the aortic valve are going to be closed tight because you don't want blood to flow back into the ventricles. No blood should be going backwards. It should only be going one direction. So hopefully this helps. Again, there's some practice questions and there's practice quizzes for you to really review, really looking at what's happening when the ventricles contracts and then the ventricle relaxes, what is happening with the valves. And then there are slides that then will review what happens when the valves are diseased. Then you have backflow, regurgitation. Okay, so that's gonna be in the next three slides, reviewing what happens when the valves are diseased. Okay. Again, contact me if you have any questions. Keep on practicing the quiz. Keep on journaling. Really understand, master this material. And then um, it will all make sense once you spend a lot, some time looking at the material.